everybody, I am Greg Sussman, joined today by JJ Zacharyson to go over the players that we're buying and selling as we head into week number seven. What's happening, JJ? Not too much, man. Ready for, uh, for week seven to start. Absolutely. So let's kick it into high gear with some players that you're buying this week. And that brings us to Houston's DeAndre Hopkins, who hasn't had the blow-up game yet. We've seen it from Will Fuller. We've seen it from Darren Fells, even Kenny Stills. Not so much DeAndre Hopkins. Is this the week it happens in Indianapolis? I mean, it could, um, but you're buying DeAndre Hopkins mostly because he's DeAndre Hopkins. You know, he does have the third highest target share still among wide receivers in the NFL. He's seen at least 20% of the team's targets in every single game this year. If there's one cause for concern, it's the fact that he's only seen one target within the opponent's 10 yard line. But that's something that's a, a statistic that he led the league in with 15 last year. So if we look over the larger sample, DeAndre Hopkins is a good red zone threat. We know that. Uh, so as a result, I'm looking at that sample as opposed to the six games that we've seen, and that's why I'm buying DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. In fact, one of the first two players you took uh, in your fantasy football drafts at the wide receiver position, it was him and DeAndre. It was him and Devontae Adams. Adams obviously out with injury. DeAndre Hopkins underwhelming to this point. Hopefully that turns around soon. Another player that J.J. is buying here this week is the Bills' Josh Allen. He's coming off a bye, and he's been really good for fantasy purposes. This week, he's home against Miami. We talked about him yesterday on the program. Why do you like Josh Allen? Yeah, so last week on the show, I talked about John Brown as a player to buy, and Josh Allen, it's really the same logic. They're walking into a cake schedule. They get Miami this week. They're going to face Philadelphia, Washington, Cleveland, and Miami again over this five-game stretch. You know, I don't usually trade for a quarterback. You might not even have to trade for Josh Allen. He might be on your waiver wire, but he's someone who could really benefit your fantasy team over the next month. The schedule easing up is obviously helpful to Allen, who's been a fantasy commodity given what he could do with his legs. I like Allen a lot. With that soft schedule, it's time to grab them. Continuing your trend of buying bi week players, that brings us now to DJ Moore. DJ Moore has teamed up with Kyle Allen, has been pretty good. The question, obviously, in Carolina is who will be the quarterback coming out of the bye now that Cam Newton has been cleared to practice? DJ Moore, no matter who the quarterback is, though, you're buying. Yeah, exactly. You know, we've seen over the last two weeks, DJ Moore finally see good usage with Kyle Allen under center, which should give you confidence that no matter who's under center, he should see some volume. Kyle Allen's first two games, DJ Moore's target share was around 11%. Over the last two weeks, it's been 27% and 32%. Uh, and DJ Moore has been underperforming in the touchdown column as well. I love to look at yards versus touchdowns because yards correlate strongly to touchdowns. So the more yards a player has, generally speaking, he will score more touchdowns. DJ Moore right now, based on his yardage total, and this is based off of the last five years worth of data, but based on his yardage total, he should have about 2.6 touchdowns right now, but he only has one. So you're looking at a situation where his target share is really strong, but you're able to buy low, not just because he's on a bye week, but because he does have a positive touchdown regression coming. Things looking up for DJ Moore. Let's hope it continues for the Carolina Panthers. Now we have to get to the part of the show where we tell you who we don't want anymore, and that includes Terry McLaurin. Scary Terry's been really good when he's been on the field for Washington, and he has a clear connection with Case Keenum. The question, of course, is how long, how much longer will Case Keenum be the quarterback for the Washington football team? This week, Terry, Terry McLaurin and the Redskins face off against one of the best defenses in the NFL. It's the San Francisco 49ers. You're selling Terry. Yeah, that 49ers matchup is going to be really tough. And then after that matchup, he gets Minnesota and Buffalo on the road. So those are three really rough matchups three weeks in a row. And then on top of that, just going back to the yards to touchdowns conversion uh, at wide receiver, Terry McLaurin right now has five touchdowns, but based on his yardage total, he should have about half of that. So there's negative regression coming in the touchdown column. It's a tough schedule. And we don't know what's going to happen with Case Keenum under center as this season goes on. So as much as uh, I like Terry McLaurin, as great of a season as he's having, I think now's the time to sell. Yeah, McLaurin has been absolutely awesome thus far, but can it continue? Is he this good? Can he handle some of the better defenses he's going to face? Well, those questions will be answered on Sunday, and right now, I'm not willing to take that risk. Another player that J.J. is moving on from is Miles Sanders in Philadelphia, which is kind of interesting here, J.J., because as you get deeper into the season, most fantasy players are buying some of these younger running backs, like a Miles Sanders or a David Montgomery. But you're selling. How come? Yeah, look, I want Miles Sanders to be a thing in Philadelphia, too, uh, but he's trending in the wrong direction. Despite the fact that he had a pretty good outing as a receiver this past week, he still only saw 15% of Philadelphia's running back rushes and the 7% target share, and he had the lowest snap share of his entire season. 
Uh, given the fact that he did have a good game, though, it's the time to sell. You know, I do like Miles Sanders as a talent, but they like Jordan Howard, and Jordan Howard has has earned time in that backfield. So I think all of that combined just makes Miles Sanders a sell. It's convoluted in Philly as it seemingly is every year. We always jump on board, whether it's a, a Miles Sanders or a Josh Adams last season, and they always let us down. This year, right now, Miles Sanders is doing just that. Use his last game as an opportunity to sell him off. One last player that we are selling away, and that is Kansas City's Damian Williams. It's a tale of two weeks here, JJ, because last week Damian Williams returned, and he looked every, good, every bit as good as he did for the second half of last season. Now, this past game, he barely got the ball. He was barely on the field. It was the LaShawn McCoy show. You're selling Damian Williams. I am. You know, if you look at uh, his season-long numbers at the end of the year, he might look okay enough, but I think that we should should not ignore the predictability aspect of things. And right now, that Kansas City backfield, no matter the fact that, you know, there is uh, a lot of fantasy points to be had there, it's a headache. You know, dealing with these running backs in the backfield week in and week out, it's going to be hard to predict who's going to perform or not. You know, two weeks ago, Damian Williams sees 90% of the team's running back rushes and over a 10% target share. This past week, he was barely used, but fortunately, he did find the end zone, and you can use that when trying to sell him this week to another person in your league. He just didn't do all that much this week despite finding the end zone. So, again, with my, like, much like Miles Sanders, use that as a selling off point. We're not telling you players that you, you can't sell. We're telling you players that you should sell. Damian Williams fits that category. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, JJ. Best of luck on your waiver wire this week. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Tomorrow, Jim Sonis will join me as we take a look at Week 7 from a daily fantasy perspective. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.